Good afternoon, everyone. In this presentation, we're going to see a dump analysis, .NET Core or .NET dump analysis. So this is the agenda of the presentation. We're going to see a crash, .NET crash in fact. Then we're going to take the dump of the crash and we're going to analyze it. We're going to see a couple of commands and stuff like that. Without uh, much introduction, we're going to see a demo. This is a .NET Core application or .NET application you can see. So this is a .NET application which is going to crash at this particular line because it is throwing an exception and no one is there to handle it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let it crash. I'm going to do a start without debugging. So it crashed. So how do I know the application has crashed? Suppose if this is uh, happening in production and uh, you don't know about any of this thing, it's it's a random crash. So uh, the best place to look is the event viewers. So in the event viewer, go to application events, Windows windows application events so here you can see the application has crashed so this is a crash which just happened so here uh, there is a little more information about uh, this particular crash so uh, this is like a signature so faulting application dot exe version so if you see this it means that the application has crashed we know that the application is crashed now how do we get the dumps by default the operating system won't create a dump it creates a dump but it's a mini dump from a dotnet analysis perspective mini dump is very um, you know it, it may not give you any any information so we need a full dump or full user dump so to get that we need to do a configuration which we're gonna see next so it is the Windows error reporting settings. And this is a key which we need to set. We have two options. One is the user hype and the local machine hype. In this case, we're gonna, we're gonna go with the local machine. In this, there are two values are of importance to us. You can read the rest of the values if you want to further configure it. Uh, the dump type and the dump location. So let's see that. This is the dump folder so dump folder gives you the location where the dump comes when the application crashes where the dump will get generated so this is that location so in this case i have configured uh, this particular location to collect the dump and the second one which is important for us is the dump type so the dump type determines whether it's a mini dump full dump etc so in this case the dump type is 2 and for a dotnet crash it should be always 2 we need a full uh, user dump in fact this particular configuration is true for native crash analysis as well not just for dotnet so any application crash this is how it is handled so i have already configured this thing so i might have got the dump already yes there is a new dump has created so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look into that dump so i have opened a windybug if you are new to windybug you can watch my series on windybug a lot of things like uh, setting up symbols etc is being discussed in that particular series in this case uh, my symbol setting is pretty straightforward it's just srv star i'm going with the default all i'm going to do is to drag and drop the dump into the debugger and the first command I'm going to type is tilde star k. This is pretty much the command which I always type when I open a user dump. Some people go with bang analyze hyphen v, but this is this is my way of doing it. Seeing the call stack, I know that this is a .NET dump because uh, the common language runtime is loaded. So this is the core CLR. This is a common language runtime for .NET Core in Windows. There's a similar module in Linux as well. 
So at this point, there is no point uh, doing, unless I'm, I'm troubleshooting the framework itself, there is no point doing a native analysis. So next task I need to do, or the next command I need to do is dot load by SOS core CLR. So what I'm doing is I'm loading the son of strike extension, the .NET extension for the .NET analysis. So this command is loading the exact same SOS DLL which is there in this core CLR folder or directory. So this is needed because there is a one-to-one -one mapping between the CLR version and the Son of Strike versions. So whenever you are loading a SOS, you need to load it from the same directory as the core CLR. If you are getting the dump from production, you need to get it from the production mission, this particular DLLs, to analyze that particular dump unless it is the same version in your development computer. All right, so we have loaded the SOS. The next command we need to execute is tilde star e bang CLR stack. So this command is gonna give you all the call stacks of all the managed threads. So it won't show if the thread is not managed, it'll say that uh, it's not a managed thread. It's not a .NET thread, it's a native thread. So it won't be able to see, it, it, it won't be able to show you the stack of that particular thread. But if it is a managed thread, it will show you the stack. Not always 100% correct, but it will give you a picture. In this case, we can see that the problem is happening in this particular thread and there is this function uh, which is there on the stack. Now, to know more about it, what we can do is we can switch to that particular thread. In this case, the thread is zero. We are already there in the thread, but I'm just uh, switching it. The next command is bank DSO. So what I have done is from the CLS stack command, I found out the managed thread, which is looking suspicious from a crash perspective and I switched to that particular thread and then executed the command bank DSO. So what is bank DSO? Bank DSO is dumping the stack objects. This is a very valuable command when uh, any problem happens, especially from the .NET perspective. So this command, what it does is um, dump all the objects on that particular stack of that particular thread. So in this case, this many objects are there. As you can see, there is an exception object. Normally exception objects on the stacks are problematic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a print exception on this particular object, bang p. So we got a stack trace. So this is a stack trace of that exception. So in this function, the exception is happening. So what is the message this uh, particular um, exception is printing? It is test. So that is the uh, exception message. So in this particular case, there is no inner exceptions. If it had any inner exceptions, the command is same with another argument. It is bank p hyphen nested. Again, the same object. So this will show you the inner exceptions. In, in this case, there is no inner exception, so um, it doesn't give you any different result. Also, if you click on one of this exception, it will just uh, do a raw dump of the object. It is not very useful in the case of exception. Although print exception is doing pretty much the same thing, it is more user friendly. For example, uh, you, you can pretty much dump all these things from here but uh, the print exception will give you everything in one shot. Um, it is more exception centric uh, dumping. Now let's discuss some theory behind what we have seen so far. So second chance exception is um, what we call crash in normal cases. 
so exceptions which are not handled by the application so application doesn't know what to do with that exception so it handed over to the operating system and operating system handles it uh, in this case it has generated a dump for us uh, we change some of the registry keys of the operating system so the the keys which we changed is the keys of the operating system configuring the operating system to instruct what to do when an application is crashed so that's what we pretty much did so um it has created a dump it killed the process always in the case of second chance exception the process is getting killed this is true for all programming languages all operating system so this is how basic exception handling works it will give a chance for the application to handle if the application is not handling it the operating system will kill the process what is a dump so we have seen that the uh, file has been generated and we opened that file in WinDebug. so dump is the snapshot of the process at one particular point in time so it's like a photo of the process of the application with infinite resolution to be more technical a dump is the committed bytes of a user mode process with some additional headers it can be read by tools like debuggers in this case win debug certain versions of visual studio open it as well don't have dumps like the one we saw should be analyzed using the extension son of strike which comes with the donut framework and we need to use the exact same version of son of strike which is there in the clr folder like i mentioned for that we use the command dot load by instead of dot load so it is nothing but a memory pretty printer uh, like any other extension we can do the same thing uh, using dc dtdc all this uh, you know base commands uh, what extension has been doing but it's difficult sos is pretty pretty straightforward in future presentation we will see some raw dumping as well uh, without using sos so this is uh, just an animation of what just happened so we had the dotnet application which is the uh, red box here the dotnet application had an unhandled exception so it uh, reported to the kernel so whenever an application doesn't have doesn't know how to handle an exception it just uh, you know fall back into the operating system the operating system launched a debugger in this case the windows error reporting tool which is the debugger here and the debugger attached to the dotnet application which is in the crash state and it collected the dump so this is the dump collection and the debugger wrote the dump to the file system to that particular folder which we mentioned the registry key so this is the summary of what uh, what happened and this is summary of some of the commands we have looked at uh, load by uh, dot load by command you can use dot load as well dot load followed by the absolute path of the sos dll uh, then we have seen tilde star e bang CLR stack so tilde star e is uh, for printing the stack of all the threads then uh, we have seen tilde star k bang dso bang p uh, bang do dump object so this is something which you need to be aware about this particular presentation and uh, most of the presentation which are coming up so all the concepts discussed in this presentation is true for all the programming languages almost all especially java and uh, pretty much all the platform as well uh, the same debugging techniques you can use for native uh, debugging as well so keep that in mind it's just the commands different it's just the tools different or the concepts uh, pretty much 100 percent portable so that brings us to the summary we have seen a dotnet application crashing and we have seen how to configure the dump then we have collected the dump we have analyzed the dump and we have seen uh, very uh, very basic commands to analyze the dumps and we saw some theory behind uh, the whole uh, dump collection and analysis as usual, you can reach out to me by usual channels if you have some questions. That's about the presentation. Now, 
reviews comments and suggestions I would like to take from one single location so if you don't mind I would like to follow this particular pattern for the reviews and comments unfortunately it is not really useful to me if you update the YouTube comments as YouTube is just one way we publish content now if you think you need more personal attention or have some in-depth doubt or need some more training please feel free to follow these links also please refer someone if you think they can benefit from similar trainings all services are available online as well as direct classroom training so that's it thank you for watching see you next time